What is good friends, I'm here with Ulti Cycle 2, the ending. I recorded this live a few days ago, but it was impossible to li live narrate because of the heat. Uh, the sun shining immediately in my room here in Germany, it's super hot. But yeah, the cycle ends in like 70 or 80 minutes at the time I was recording this. Uh, let's look at the top 8 at the moment. Semiotic is pretty much guaranteed in. Mementes at number 2 has a good shot, but he's not guaranteed in yet. Then we have a well you high ABR and Kid of Death, I know him a bit as well, so I hope Taze and Kid of Death can qualify. Then we have um, Ojama, Kingpin and um, Bro Kappa. Those are the top 8 at the moment. I'm gonna pause real quick and be right back with a live game on, from High Ladder. Okay, so we have a game here. Cory is using a pretty cool team. I've watched him play with this the other day, so I know um, almost all the sets. Mega Minichim is a great breaker. He has a defensive backbone. These two help him with Kartana, this helps him with Psychic types. Um, even if the opponent has a Magnezone, he has Excadrill, which is a bulky Excadrill as a backup check for stuff like Tabu Lele. I think it's the Rocks Rapid Spin Earthquake Toxic Drill. The Slowbro is a Protect Scald Slack of Ice Beam variant, if I'm not mistaken. I've also seen some people use um, Toxic on this now in Cycle 3, like today when I was watching um, Poke Aim Live. But yeah, I'm just narrating over the old um, Cycle 2 video now. Um, this High Dragon is really cool. It's Z-Move, Darkinium Z with Roost, Dark Pulse, Earth Power and Flash Can. And Reuniclus is spammed on the ladder with Toxic Spikes. Um, like, comment, Acid Armor, Recover, Psychic, Reuniclus. But High Dragon is not affected by Toxic Spikes because it has Levitate and yeah, it can obviously deal with Reuniclus. Because Reuniclus runs Mono Psychic. Um, yeah. Helmet Tornadoes is just a great pivot with Regenerator and double. Ha I think it's um, Defog, U turn, Knock of Hurricane, pretty standard set. It might be Heat Wave, I'm not 100% sure, I don't think it is. But if it's Defog, I would like that a lot. If it's Rapid Spin plus Defog, double hazard control to make sure um, you can keep toxic spikes off so Slowbro and Medicham don't get statist. Slowbro is quite important um, on this team to deal with Zygarde. And yeah, Cory used this like for the most part. Protect is really cool here to scout for the choice Ladi. Now we can potentially go to Medichem or High Dragon, knowing that this is locked into Trick. The opponent is probably gonna like if I was the opponent, I would double out, predicting one of these two to come out. But yeah, if Cory wins this game, um, I think he's at the moment in high 1900, so he has to win multiple games to qualify. He has to win like four or five games at least, maybe a few more. So he, um, his opponent did double into um, Finny, made a good play. But yeah, double regenerator, I'm a really big fan of that. Um, Corey used um, a team that he used in Cycle 1 for a few games, but for the most part he just used this team. Um, yeah, it's the standard mix, defensive Stellar Stealer. I think the Hydreigon might actually be modest. Hydreigon is also a cool Heatran check, I didn't talk about that yet. Uh, yeah, I assume the, this has speed for Zygarde. It might have a bit more speed, but that's like the speed that you have to run for sure, speed for Zygarde. And then you get some extra EVs to put into bulk. If you're modest, you only have a little bit of bulk. If he's timid, then he gets more bulk. Um, yeah, I was... I'm gonna do a live with this team, but I don't have the exact sets, so... I'll, I'm waiting for like someone to post this team on forums with the exact spreads, or maybe um, Cory will pass it to me. Also, Cory... Um, what's it called? Not Cory. I asked you guys um, about a show on live and you could pretty much vote what team you want me to use in a live. And the Scarf Excadrill team with um, Z-Move Bulu 1 and Mega Slowbro. And yeah, we'll be bringing you a, a live with that. I did not forget about it, I just have not recorded at all because of the heat in Germany. But yeah, you guys can see this is a highlighter game, 29 people were watching this. Oh yeah, Protect on Slowbro also helps with Choice Tita, obviously. But yeah, I feel like... I'm just gonna do this like chill, just talk about what has been used in, in OLT. I don't really, I don't wanna do this um, like a tournament game where I like talk about every single turn because that's just, I'm not in the mood. It's like now it's evening, it's like 10 p.m. and it's still really hot even though it's already kinda late and it's already dark outside. <clears throat> I got my window open so I can, so I'm somewhat okay. Like even with window open, it's still hot as fuck. But yeah, Slowbro is a great uh, Mammoth Swan answer. So Cory can just click Scald here, trying to get the burn. His opponent doesn't even switch into um, Finny. But yeah, this game is looking over, and I don't remember how high this brought Cory. It either brought him to near 2000 or it brought him in the 2000s. Like 
I don't remember if it was 1990 before the game or after the game. We will see that when it ends. Um, it's pretty obvious at this point that he's going to win this, and I remember him winning this game as well. But he has to win uh, multiple other games to still qualify. I think he's he's still like 70 points away, maybe from the top eight spot at the moment. Yeah, I um, I think did I talk about it in the first lettering video that I did for OT already? I don't remember exactly. But yeah, the slow bro is able to take on the power, pump, power up punch, slow bunny. The slow bro also has some spadef investment. I'm not sure what it's for exactly. I assume it, hel um, it helps it check heat run better. And it can also take hits from AV McGinn a bit better. Um, rain has been really common on the ladder and this team does well versus rain. The slow bro is a great answer for stuff like um, Mega Swamp. But yeah, and yeah, we can see now Corey is at 2004. So I'm going to pause and be right back with a different game. Oh yeah, I was going to show you. Corey is now... 2004 um, so he still has a way to go he has to get up there you can see I have two mouses here because I'm there um, going over this old recording but yeah um, bro Kappa is 2071 and Curry just hit the 2000 so he still has to get up there okay Curry got another game he's playing Karen Smith Karen Smith is just playing for fun um, Karen Smith already qualified in cycle one. Oh, also I wanted to record the, the ending of cycle one but yeah, I, I recorded some minutes of it, but I didn't like my video too much. I just kept restarting the recording and it didn't really turn out that great. There was timer stalling at the end of cycle 1 and it was not that interesting to watch. So I just stopped recording. But pretty much Cory's game plan is here. He has to get the rocks up as early as possible, as fast as possible. Because there's a Volcorona on the other side. Volcorona is a huge threat to this team. Um, so this could be... Double defog on Karen Smith's side. Um, this is more of a fun team that Karen Smith is using with most likely Z move Como. -O. Um, like usually you see Z move for Corona, but if you have a Como on your team, you're most likely gonna be using nice crit. You're most likely gonna be using the Comonium Z set that gives you uh, Omni Boost, right? But yeah, it's defog uh, Megalady, and I assume either the Lando or the Katana might also have defog because you want to make sure rocks stay off the field. But yeah, the Cory can go for Toxic here. This is a bulky Toxic extra like I said earlier. And now he can spam Stealth Rock. That way he keeps rocks up and the Ladi dies to Toxic if it stays in. Um, Excadrill is slower, so if Ladi defogs and he keeps clicking rocks, the rocks will stay on the field. But he earthquakes there, okay. So now Ladi dies to... It lives, okay. So now Cory can still get up the rock. So he expertly calculated that knowing that the Ladi is going to live the Toxic. I don't know if he did actually. If he did, big props to him. But yeah, now he just has to spam rocks. Knowing that the Toxic is going to rack up. Uh, Karen Sims makes a good play there going for Surf. But yeah, Cory just clicks rocks again here. And because Karen either has to kill the Excadrill or has to defog and rocks go up again. Like Surf was the correct play. Because if you defog there... Nice lag. My computer is lagging. Um, I'm going to pause it real quick and fix this. But yeah, that was obviously the only play um, to go for surf because if you defog, the extra the extra would still be alive. And if this is uh, also defog Landris, Karen can go for it here. It's Rocky Helmet, but I assume this might be the Rocker because it's the only potential Rocker on the team. And the other secondary defogger might be the Cartana instead. Yeah, so Karen does just get up the rocks. Um, what did Karen use cycle one to qualify? I'm not sure exactly, but yeah, I just looked at Corey's win loss: 54 and 9, 91.9 .9 GXC, absolute beast. And yeah, that's what I was talking about earlier. This slow does have some sort of spadef investment. You could see it takes that volt switch from uh, Megina, Megina quite well. That's um, most likely AV Megina on Karen Smith's side. Uh, because otherwise Karen Smith gets destroyed by Greninja. And also Tabu Lele is a huge threat. Protects on the Z-move. This is not going to do much, but Kumo is still going to get a boost. But yeah, this, this Kumo is not a huge problem. Um... The Volcarona is pretty much the biggest threat for Cory in this game. Like, he has Torn plus Celesteela to check Kartana. Slowbro is able to um, force out the Como. -O. Goes Kartana knowing that the Slack of is gonna come out. So, this Kartana could either be Scarf or Bandit. I'm thinking it's probably Scarf because the team is a bit slow. And yeah, Hydreigon with Z move is a great switch in. Protect from Slowbro, let him scout. What the opponent wants to go for. I don't know the speed tiers, and I also don't know how much speed Cory is running on his High Dragon. So I assume he was f slower with his High Dragon than the Kumo, so he switched out. So I expect uh, maybe Scald or Ice Beam here from the slow bro. Yeah, just goes for Scald. Now we can just protect, get that extra leftovers. Well, he doesn't have to, but yeah, he doesn't have to. 
gets poisoned, that's really annoying. Poison Jab is used on Komo, that makes a lot of sense because it hits Tapu Bulu. Because sometimes people um, go to their Fairy type, obviously, to prevent uh, the Z move, because the Z move doesn't work on Fairy types. The Omni boosting Z move from Komo. Komo's a really cool mon, I wish this was a little bit more viable in OU. But yeah, this Spadef investment on the slow bro is amazing for Cory. As uh, Karen goes into Cartana there, predicting the slack off. Now Slowbrook is just going to protect again to Scout. So Leaf Blade. So I assume Celestia is really obvious here. So Karen could pull a double switch, um, predicting the Celestia to come out. Does just Leaf Blade again. Okay, playing it safe. And um, Cory can predict the switch here and go for Leech Seed, I think. Because there's no way Katana is going to stay in. And even if Katana stays in, okay, just sex the Komo to Rocks. Um, fair play. Cory just click flamethrower, okay. So Volcarona comes out and now Cory has to click Leech Seed in my opinion. Um, he cannot let this set up for free. And he does make the correct play, yeah. Now, um, this might be a bulky Roost Volk or maybe... I don't know what it is because it's not Z-Move since Z-Move is on the Komo. I'm not sure what the item would be. It could be a berry. It could be... Um, I don't know what else it would be. <laughs> I think... I don't know. But yeah, Cory is going to spam Heavy Slam. If he gets burnt, this can be really bad for him. But yeah, Leech Seed plus Heavy Slam is doing quite a good chunk to the Volcarona. But eventually he will get burned from Flame Buddy. Unless this is um, unless this is a Swarm Volcarona. But yeah, he does get burned, so it's confirmed Flame Buddy. Goes hard into managing, breaking the Roost. Now he can go for Fake Out and he has to hope that he doesn't get burned. And... Um, well, if this Volcarona doesn't have a button move, then the High Dragon can check it as well. Um, so it's Roost, Quiver Dance, Fire move is guaranteed, and the last move is either HP Ground or... Could be HP Ground, could be Bug Buzz, could be Psychic for Packs, I don't know. But Psychic for Packs, I don't know if that makes that much sense if you're not using Z move. But yeah, High Dragon comes out on the Fiery Dance, no special attack boost. So unless it's Bug Buzz, um, High Dragon should be able to beat this Volcarona. Goes for Z-Move. This should not kill because of the Spadef boost. But the Leech Seed helps um, Cory a lot here. And he switches out there into Managing Predicting another Roost, I think. Yeah. And now he can just click Fake Out and get the Volcarona low. So also stalling out Roosts. And that actually kills. Okay, I didn't think it would kill with the Leech Seed, but it does. So Cory turns out, he I think he pretty much wins this game. He played well around the Volcarona and it probably wasn't Bug Buzz. <coughs> But yeah, it was a hard matchup for Cory. Um, it was just important to get Rocks up early and lead sheet with the Celesteela and kind of keep Volcarona low. And he, yeah, he, he kind of just said it wasn't both. So if Cory wins this, he, he just got into 2000s. I assume he's going to get to like 2018, 2020-ish. Cory said, oh, you won regardless? Um, I don't have Toxic on, bro. Is he, um, yeah, um, I don't know exactly what he means. Maybe if the Volcarona was played different. Yeah, like Volcarona is still a huge threat to his team is what he's trying to say. But yeah, we're going to see how many points he gets. Let's get them to 2024. We're going to refresh real quick. Um, 2024 brings uh, Cory number 25 on the ladder. And top 8 now is... Um, yeah, there's already another game that is Mojon that I was trying to join. But you can see Cory is getting up there, he still needs a few points, but he's like 50 points away maybe. Okay, next game was Volcanion Farden. I don't think this game matters and it's not that high at all, so... I might just... Um, well, I'm gonna talk about it real quick, about webs in general. So we have seen different variant of webs. There's a version that Empu used in Cycle 1 with Megalopony. Then there's also a different... Um, what's it called? HO in general has seen... Like, we have seen that quite a lot. Superior is really cool because it can beat opposing Sticky Web. Because if the opponent sets up Sticky Webs, you get a speed boost um, with your Superior. Pinsa is a really savage mon under webs. Um, I think it's uh, it's most likely theme of Gyarados on Volcanion's team. And yeah, Mega Pinsa, obviously. And Rocks Guard Jump, most likely. There's a team we have also seen that is like... Um, Mega Manicham webs with Stealth Rock Z Move Mew, that's an interesting team. Like, I have so many teams that were, have been used in OT that I snatched or got passed. Um, yeah, I will definitely use some of those and show on lives. I also haven't been playing that much months lately. I feel like I'm kind of out of it. Like, yeah, you guys can see Faden is 1921, so he needs 
like 150 points like he's far away like i don't think it's possible to, to get all those points in one hour unless you get on unless you get a huge win streak <laughs> I haven't shown everyone. There's like a lot of people that are still uh, that can still potentially make um, qualify. But yeah, Farden is using offense now. That's just because there's not that much time left. For the most part of the cycle, Farden has been using um, stall. I think, or at least when I was watching him, he has been using stall. And yeah, Volcanion is good. This guy's like always in the OU room. Um, I've seen him make some really weird plays, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna like talk down on, on anyone. Like this is just a fun video. What else was used in cycle one? Let me remember. And what was different from cycle one to cycle two? Mega Mowa and Rotom, they have been used quite a lot. I mean Ultra Bolts made a team that Taze has been spamming for cycle two. Um, Taze used the Mega Heracross team at first because Mega Heracross can deal with stall and versus offense Heracross can still trade a kill usually. And then, what's it called? I forgot what I was trying to say. Oh yeah, I'm checking Hello's rank here because he's also relatively high. At this time, um, people talked about it in my chat that he's really high on ladder, but I didn't have access. I think his game was hidden. Or there were so many games, I couldn't watch all the games. And yeah, the team that my man UB made with, um, with Rotom. The reason Rotom is so good, um, Blunder already made a video and talked about it the other day. As yeah, now I switched games, realizing, like, checking out how high the other game is, because Ash is 1988, which means he still has a chance to qualify. Yeah, Blana talked about it in this video that he made the other day. Um, Rotom is really good, it's able to deal with Swampert, Z-Move Gyarados, that's um, used on HO these days. And it, Volt Switch is just amazing. It Volt Switches on a lot of Mons, and <clears throat> you just get the momentum, you get to bring your Breakers in, and Mega Mobile is just kind of hard to switch into slash impossible to switch into like if you volt switch on clefable into mega mobile well, <clears throat> like if they have heatran or lando they can usually switch in once but like they're not great switch-ins especially if you have rocks up um like thunder punch or knockoff is going to do a lot to heatran and like either player or ice punch can um do a shit on slash oko landris um if it only get if it's a little bit chipped i'm pretty sure ice punch okos i don't know if it okos from full always if it's bulky scarf landris um defensive landris is not really seen these days Yeah, I myself, I'm not that great at like using HO or narrating HO, so I'm not gonna like talk about this game much. I know we're gonna see HO in playoffs though, because Empo already qualified. Um, yeah, basically in the cycle one at the ending, I'm still gonna talk about that a little bit real quick. Um, yeah, there was also a little bit um, Mega Mawa usage. Oh yes, Charms, Charm Flash Rain is like everywhere in Cycle 1 and also in Cycle 2 it's used. Uh, Zamiya Rain, it's like... Um, Pelipar with Damproc. Uh, Assault Vest Megina with Focus Blast because that helps weaken Ferrothorn for like Swampert. And then Bennett Kartana, which also helps pressure the rain checks. Blunder already said that in his video. And then it's like... Yeah, I mean Bennett Kartana just helps Swampert and Kingdra. But yeah, pretty much the teams that um, the team that my man UB made, it has uh, AV Tangros, a fast Rotom Wash. It has enough speed to Willow Wisp Mimikyu. That team is on the forums. If you guys want to test it out yourself, I will link you a link in the descriptions with the team. But yeah, um, Volcanion wins this game versus Farin. He's 1957, so Volcanion still needs how many points? He still needs around like 100 points, maybe a few more to qualify. Uh, Halos is using a Mega Teeter team here. I haven't seen Halos play much this cycle, so I don't know the sets from this team. But yeah, I was just going to talk about the team that my man UB made. It has Scarf Jirachi, which sounds really weird, but it's a cool speed control and people don't expect it. Now people will expect it because the team is already known, but at that point the team was not known at all. It was a team he used in World Cup versus, I think, Low Pony Kicks. And this is a uh, break and Mega Mobile, and you can get it pretty much. You can get the Mega Mobile in. He has a Z Move Lando, which is also really underrated on that team. On that team, Z Move Lando, um, really great on the ladder. A lot of times, people don't scout for it, and then they just sack their Tangros or Bulu to it. And even if they scout for it, um, not like Z Move Lando has great switch ins. Like you can usually get a kill with that every game. So it's like Rocks, Z Move Lando on that team. Then he has. <coughs> Some um, Voltron with Volt Switch Rotom and U-Turn on Jirachi to get in Mega Mawile and to get in the Z-Move Landris. 
Then he has an AV Tangros. Um, Tangros plus Rotom is pretty much able to help him a lot with the rain matchup. I know this team is not on the screen at the moment. I hope there's a game. Uh, if my man Tails gets another game, but I don't think he has to get another game. He's number two out at the moment out of the top eight. But if someone uses that team, I will. I can talk about it better. Maybe I should just make a video that Blunder does, where he talks about the team in depth. In depth. My bad. I'm bad at pronouncing that. But yeah. Um, What's it called? What was the last member on that team? I actually can't remember. Well, yeah, so that team has Healing Wish on Scarf Jirachi. And that way, then you can bring back um, Mega Morwell if you have to versus Stall. You can play your Morwell Reckless versus Stall and then Healing Wish it back later in the game. So you pretty much cannot lose versus Stall with that team unless they have like Arcanine Stall or whatever to beat. <laughs> To beat uh, Mega Mobile, I, th I know that's a thing sometimes. Like if you specifically try to counter Team Mega Mobile, you bring Arcanine Stall. But yeah, if Ash has to win this game to like. Um, well, Halos is high on that. I hope Halos wins this. I I don't know him too much, but that's, I know him a little bit, so I'm rooting for him here in this one. But yeah, what else was used? Like Rain. Since Rain was used that much. Those Tangros Rotom team, Rotom teams have been popping up. Um, team that ABR made and team that my man UB made. The, the only difference is ABR's has Tornadus and UB's has Z move Landris. And what's it called? ABR has Z move Heatran. UB also has Ash Greninja on his, which is just amazing laying down those spikes. What is the difference? The difference is UB runs more speed on his Rotom. That way. Um, yeah, he can outpace Mimikyu and burn it. Um, I assume in some situations you want the bulk of Mimikyu, but the speed can also be really helpful. Did I say Mimikyu? I meant Rotom. You have speed to Wisp Mimikyu. Uh, because Mimikyu runs Adamant, otherwise it's too weak. Oh yeah, Zam Sham Flash Rain also runs Mimikyu. I didn't talk about that yet. Which, um, I don't think Mimikyu is too bad. Disguise is a great ability. And SD into Z-Move can do some good damage and weaken some rain checks. From, like Mimikyu can weaken rain checks for Swampert and the other ones as well. Um, but yeah, what I was talking about is UB's and ABR's team. You guys probably know how ABR's team looks. The only difference is UB has a Scarf Jirachi. Um, ABR does not have a... and he has a Z-Move Landris. And ABR has a Z-Move Heatran and a Helmet Tornadus. Those are the two ones that are different. Um, ABR's team has triple priority, I think, so it doesn't, and a bulky backbone, so it doesn't need a Scarfer. But UB's does have a Scarfer and a Scarf Jirachi. But yeah, it's looking like Ash is gonna lose this game and... Is he? I think so, right? I'm not really paying attention, but... Yeah, I don't think he can win this game, honestly. He is... Uh, what's it called? What's the item on Coco? I didn't pay attention. But yeah, um, he needs to roost with Zap just to keep it healthy. Um, if Zap is healthy, Halucha can never win the game. I feel like this game wasn't too interesting. I should've just skipped this. But it's fine. Um, let me think, let me think if I can find any other teams to talk about. It have been used a lot. So um, yeah, a bulky Mega Heracross team was used from Tays. Um, he used it to get an on the high, high on the ladder. Ski made a team. So Heracross just destroys Fat, and like I said, it can trade a kill versus offense. Yeah, looking this looking like this game is over. And what's it called? The team has DLZ Heatran. Zemo Heatran is pretty busted. Um, kind of thinking Heatran might deserve a suspect test. Um, like Heatran can just adapt to its checks. It's such a good mon. Steel Steelium Z is amazing um, to Bob Mega Alakazam because Mega Alakazam has been used to check. Um, obviously, it can trace Flash Fire and check uh, Magma Storm. It can come in on Magma Storm and on Fire Z from Heatran, but it cannot coming on Steel Z. Steel Z also hits Megalades really hard. Uh, Fire Z and Steel Z both hit Gliscor really hard. Like Heatran has ways to deal with all its checks. Yeah, I'm just gonna talk a bit about the meta game. I uh, hope that's interesting for you guys. Also, I'm gonna change the music the next time when I pause it. Um, yeah, Heatran can like another one that like Gastron is kind of low in usage right now. But even if you want to use Gastron to deal with Heatran. They can still sometimes um, they still carry toxic, especially on the friend the, the the teams that the French people use. It's usually um, Tapu Bulu plus Heatran, and quite often they run toxic on their Heatran, which can hit um, Megalades, Gastron. What else comes in on Heatran? 
Um, sometimes also will wisp is used to um, catch Gliscor before the Toxic Orb is activated. But Z move can also just destroy Gliscor, especially with Rocks up. Z move can Oko, um, Isa Steel, Z or Fire Z. And yeah, people, I think Modus is used to get some important KOs. ABR has um, gave Blunder their team that he used in um, Smog to his finals. But Modus Corks could crash. Now this doesn't matter, the Zapdos is not needed anymore. He's just gonna sack it. And then Greninja outspeeds the Coco now because it has the Ash form. Okay, Lando is Scarf, I guess, because he goes Lando first. Yeah, Scarf off quick. Picks up the win. I don't know how high Halos is. He's 2041. Okay, maybe he needs like um, one or two more wins. I think two more even. But yeah, I'm gonna pause the change of the music and see what other games we can find. But yeah, let me let me show you the ladder real quick. So we got um, Simiatic at one. He's guaranteed in. Taste still at two. Well, you high ABR. Kid of Death. Um, Bro Kappa and Malakith. No, no, Malakis is number 9, my bad. Well, Jama and Brokapa are still top 8 at the moment. And where is Hallows now with that win? That brought him to 2040. So he's... 2070-ish is what you need. So he's still 30 points off. Okay, so let me pause it. Also, I don't know if Ricardo has been this high all the time, but I just uh, updated the ladder and he's at 2056. Okay, I updated it again. And now he won another game and he's at 2074. So, Simiatic, Taze, Will You High, Korra, ABR, Kid of Death, Ricardo are top 8 at the moment. And Ojama is out, so now Ojama has to get a game. But I think Ojama is hiding his game, so I cannot spectate that game. But yeah, I found Cory's in another game. Um, he's still some points off, but he has been winning most of his games. So, still has a shot. So, it's turn 10 already. 2046, so he probably has to win two more games. Look at that, 92.6 GXE. But yeah, he goes into um, Steel on Explosion, gets Crit. Crit is definitely annoying for him. Um, so this is a hyper offense. I assume it's gonna be Belly Drum, Azumarill. The Megina, I'm not sure. Like, it could be a bulky Trick Room variant. Like, usually I would expect a V Megina on this type of team, but you don't know. It could also be set up. Azu and Superior, like he has multiple Ash Greninja checks, Coco as well. So let's see, is he Shift Kid Trick Room or is he, he just hard T-Bolts? But yeah, T-Bolts over Volt Switch pretty much tells us that he's most likely some sort of setup Megina. Shift Gear, okay. So, this could be Z-Move and, oh he misses a Focus Blast. And yeah, you can see there's a bulky extra drill because the Earthquake doesn't even Oko. And Focus Blast Ogos and he's alive on Megina. I have not seen that often. I don't like that too much because you wear yourself down. I prefer like either Sugar, Aya Papa or um, what was the other item? But yeah, imagine you can just click fake out here. I'm pretty sure it's gonna kill. And... So, I don't know if Superior Ogos. But Gyarados, if it's Intimidate, can get off the Intimidate here. Also Hydreigon, I just realized that is a cool Mega Gyarados check. If it doesn't run Ice Fang. Um, because it resists Crunch and Waterfall, it resists both the steps from Mega Gyarados. Oh, it goes in the Superior, okay. So, Leaf Storm? I don't know. I don't know if it occurs, like I said. I'm not gonna run any calcs. Um, I assume we're gonna see... Cory might run a calc here, and then... Um, he sees that he lives, and he stays in, okay. And he just bops the Superior. Yeah, like I was gonna say, unless it's, unless that Z-move or Spec Superior, I don't think it can kill the Medichim. So the Azu here comes out. Um, there is a potential that the Azu is the Z-move user, or it could also be Citrus Berry. Cory goes hard into Celestia, they're breaking the Aqua Jet. And now, um, Lichi the Heavy Slam. Okay, he just gets knocked out by Knock Off. So Knock Off, Aqua Jet, I assume Belly Drum and Play Rough is what the Azu is gonna have. Um, Slowbro comes out and this doesn't have Toxic, right? So he has to he has to go for Scald and hope for a burn unless he changes it to Toxic. So I think Cory's trying to get this into range. It's Citrus, okay? So it's not Z. He's trying to get this in range from Fake Out. Um, Slowbro obviously dies in one, um, but yeah, he can Fake Out. Plus he has Rocky Helmet on Tornadoes. Uh, fake Out should do like 20-ish, I would assume, Head Calc, <coughs> something like that. 
But yeah, the, the first music that I was using earlier was Origami Beats. Um, I'm gonna link the exact beat. I know Blunder usually doesn't link the exact beat. Also, I just started using that those beats from that um, page, uh, from that site, whatever. So like, if you know like the best beats from there, you can link me them, because I haven't used those. Now we have um, Explorers of the Sky music, pre fire song at the moment. I'm also gonna link that song. But yeah, Cory has to click fake out. I don't know what's taking so long here. Is there no timer on? Might just have to pause it. Because I don't want to make this video longer than one hour. Uh, maybe a little bit over an hour, but not too long. Nah, it's probably going to have to be longer than an hour, because I can see how long my file is. And even though I'm going to skip some games, it's still going to be pretty long, actually. I should have skipped those earlier games, though they weren't that interesting. But yeah, um, Aqua Jet can come out here. I don't I'm pretty sure this doesn't have Bullet Punch. Because it's a High Dragon, okay, so... What? Why did he switch? I don't understand. Why did he switch? Aqua Jet would have probably Oko to it KO'd the High Dragon. I don't know why he switched out. But yeah, Dark Kingdom Z is gonna bop the Gyarados. I guess Curry's opponent just made a misplay there. I have no idea. <laughs> and now he just loses. And now Curry gets points and he is at 2062. Uh, so Curry only has to win one more game. Maybe two more games. Let's see. Semiotic Taze. Well, you high. Kara, ABR, Kid of Death, Ricardo. Um, Ojama still has to get a game, he's not in at the moment. And yeah, Cory is up there now at number 15. Um, so Cory needs like um, 13 more points or something like that to qualify. So it's definitely doable for him. Look at that GXZ 92.8 now. But yeah, I'm gonna pause it, be right back. Never mind, here we are. Cory was Karen Smith. Yeah, I, I don't remember obviously how long it is between the games. Because I recorded this like last week, yeah. But yeah, this is... Um, the game that we already recorded earlier. Current is bringing the same team. Z-Move, Komo, AV, Megiana. Uh, Volcarona that didn't have Bug Bus. We don't know the exact set. I assume it might be HP Ground. Rock Slanders, Default Megalardi, and I think the Kartana was Scarf or was it Bandit? I think it's Scarf, right? Because that's a speed control. Yeah, Cory, um sticking with the same team. This team... It looks really interesting. Like, I gotta give props to Cory for that GXE. And also, like, even if he doesn't qualify, props to him for the GXC. Um, I obviously already knew if, know if he qualified or if he didn't. But uh, for the people that don't know, I'm not going to spoil it. I know most of you will already know it anyway. But not everyone saw the ending of the cycle. So this is, like, really interesting to watch. So he knocks off the AV, knowing he can take any hit. Because he's Rocky Hamlet, HP, Investor, Torn. And he can U-turn out. Um, um, he might not, not want to go into Excadrill. Yeah, Karen Smith did go for Hidden Power because um, that would have hit the uh, Excadrill with Hidden Power Fire. But yeah, Cory goes into Excadrill now knowing that he can take Hidden Power Fire even if that comes out because he's a bulky drill with Spit Death Investment. And now he can just get up the rocks. He needs to get the rocks up again as soon as possible for the Volcarona. Um, yeah, I already narrated this. So, What other teams were used? This cycle that I can talk about because I don't want to talk about every turn. <laughs> Yeah, we have seen stall quite a bit. I mean, Ultra Bolt's made an interesting stall. It's like Moltres Avalok. At first it was HP Ground Moltres, but he changed it to Sub, I think. And um, some other people that he passed the team have been using it. I, th I think Farden got really high with stall, like mainly with stall. He also used some other teams. And also Dundee's was quite high at one point, but dropped. I don't remember how high Dundee's was. I know in the Cycle 3 that is going on at the moment, Dundee's was 2088 or 2088 day one or day two. And then he get, got another game when he was so far ahead of everyone and he dropped points. I don't know why he did that. And Taze is talking about it like every day. <laughs> that Dunny shouldn't have done that. Like, Yeah. I mean, sometimes I guess you have a good run and you just want to go for that number. Make sure you have that number one spot insured. But yeah. If you're up there and you don't have to get games because the other people are still quite behind you. Oh, the Toxic Miss is annoying for Cory. But yeah, if you're already up there, I would only get enough games to avoid decay. Well, sometimes if you try to avoid decay and lose a game, you can still obviously drop points. Because then you get another game to try to get the points back, and then if you lose again. That can obviously happen. Hex is also a huge factor in Pokemon. Um, skill matters, but you can't... Not the, that's, the better player doesn't always win. Like It's hard to qualify for OLT because you have to... Like most play people have to play a lot of lots of games, but as you can see, Cory's GX is amazing. 
He doesn't have many games so far. If he qualifies with this, that's actually super fire. So Katana comes out? No, Megalady comes out because Karen wants to get the defog off. I don't remember how ex how healthy the Excadrill is. But yeah, Protect to get some damage on Toxic Chip on the Lady, obviously. If Excadrill is healthy enough to get rocks up again, then Cory should go to it, but I guess it's too low. So Tornadus is just gonna U-turn here slash... No, I don't think Knockoff is coming out. I think U-turn is coming out. Yeah, and Uton knocks it out, and he can maybe go manage him. You can also go to a mon like um, that gets extra leftovers, but yeah, he does go manage him. Manage him doesn't let the Volcarona set up, so definitely um, the good, the, the right play to make here. So um, Lando or Katana or what comes out, I don't know. Manage him would destroy Volcarona with fake it into Zen Headbutt. I mean, if it's max speed Volk, it's a speed tie, but you don't want to risk that if you're Karen because Volk can like win the game for, sh for potentially, like without risking it. So Scarf Katana comes out. So the Torn slash, obviously Cory can just go for Fake Out here at first to get some chip on the card, but he doesn't do that, okay. Uh, just goes hard into Torn. Either Torn or Celestia was the play, and he can just U-turn. Because he knew that the um, katana was locked into Leaf Blade, so if he, if Karen Smith switches now, he can actually get the rocks up with Excadrill on the Magina, because Excadrill is faster than AV Magina. Hard into Volt, knowing the rocks are gonna come out. Um, so, Cory stays in, going for a Toxic or Earthquake, probably Toxic, not wanting to let the Volk set up. So, goes in the Many Champ, if he fakes out here, he risks getting burned. Um, Karen might not want to switch out though, okay, he does switch out. I was just gonna say, because. If Volk comes back and it's already weakened. Hard Zen Headbutts. Okay, Cory is wild. Um, Zen Headbutt would have done a lot to the Volcarona. And I mean, I guess, yeah, it didn't want, he didn't want to fake out and get burned. So it makes some sense, yeah, that he hard Zen Headbutted. So Rocky on the uh, lander, which you don't see often, but makes some sense on Karen's team. So um, knowing it's locked into knockoff, Cory now goes into High Dragon. And Zemo High Dragon can eat knockoff with ease. We have already seen that same play happen earlier. And yeah, off power is pretty much on High Dragon. Can hit Steel types, then you have Dark Pulse and for like Reuniclus and like for Psychic types. And then you have Flash can for fairies like Clefable and um, Tabu Bulu. So Torn always to scout. Smart Strike is a good play. Now Cory can go into either Slowbro or Celesteela here. Um, he could also make an aggressive play, predicting Karen Smith to double out. But like Karen doesn't really have a great double. Um, I guess, hmm. like if you double into Volk here, you still don't get that much from it, even if you get Vulcan on, let's say you get Vulcan on Celesteela here, on a double, that still doesn't get you too much, you take rocks and the Celesteela can probably leech seed you then, because uh, Cory doesn't want to let the Volk set up for free, obviously. So, I mean, I wouldn't stay in here if I'm Cory. Tornadus can potentially hurricane the, the Volk. If, like, if it's in on Volk before Volk has set up equivalence. Um, I mean, yeah, Roost is annoying for Cory on the Volcarona. Because otherwise he could just go Medicham and fake out the Volk and switch out again and fake out. He does sack the Medicham. Um, okay, he knows... It. Oh, never mind, he doesn't sack it. He knows... Uh, I think he predicted the double switch. And he also knew that the Smart Strike wouldn't kill in case the Katana stayed in. So it was a good mid-ground, I guess. But he didn't get it, he didn't get it correct. But I think he breaks uh, Karen Smith to switch out most likely. And yeah, he obviously went into slow bro because the katana was not in fake out range yet, and Smart Strike would obviously kill the Medicham, and there's no reason to sack the Medicham. So um Corey can just scald here. Well, I guess he could slack off, but Okay, he does protect to get that extra leftovers recovery. I thought he would slack off if anything, if he would get want this healthy. Oh wait, does this even have slack off? Yeah, it does, it does. Yeah, never. I mean, I knew the set, but I was for a second I wasn't sure because he didn't click it. But <clears throat> Cory's just gonna click Skull or Ice Beam. Well, I guess Skull Skull's the play because you can, um, yeah. Like it doesn't matter too much, honestly. Whatever. <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say. But this is definitely, um, it's not over yet, but it's definitely not too looking too bad for Cory. But like the rocks is what pretty much. Let's Cory breathe in this game. If he didn't have those rocks up, I think Volk would just straight up win um, if it's set up on 
Celeste dealer or um, maybe it could even equivalent up on the I don't know, it doesn't equivalent up on much besides the Celeste dealer. Maybe it could equivalent on the Slowbro because Slowbro doesn't have special attack investment I assume. Okay now he doesn't want the Slowbro to be in. He goes on the Celeste dealer and he's spamming Leech Seed. I assume he's gonna keep spamming Leech Seed just in case Karen wants to switch out um, because this Kartana is out of range where it dies from rocks. It can still take an, uh, live another rock switch in. <clears throat> I'm surprised Cory didn't protect there, but yeah, he's just... No, 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 Cory's making the correct play, my bad. So, basically, he is ensuring if Karen switches out, he gets a Leech Seed on the Volcarona or the Como by spamming Leech Seed. If Karen stays in, Cory sacks off the Seller's Dealer because he doesn't need the Seller's Dealer. He's making the correct play because he cannot let Volcarona set up. And if he loses Seller's Dealer... He doesn't. It doesn't matter. But if Karen switches, he gets a good lead sheet off. As he gets a good lead sheet here in the Como. So that was a cool play from Corey. Um, Z move is gonna. I don't know if this kills the Steeler. It might kill. It might barely live. It lives on four percent. Soon we see a heavy slam here from uh, Corey. And <clears throat> Corey can go for protect here. Doesn't matter. He can also just sack it. He does just sack it. Okay. And Medicham can go for fake out. And Leech Sheet plus Fake Out will be able to kill the combo, I'm pretty sure. Yep. So Leech Sheet Bob. Now Kartana or Volk. Kartana comes out. Cory's not staying in here, right? I don't think so. Um hmm. What's the sack here? He does sack it, okay. No, it's locked into Leaf Blade, which means uh, if he goes, if he goes Hard Dragon, knowing that he resists Leaf Blade, because he doesn't want to risk hitting Hurry, having to hit Hurricane multiple times, and now he can click the, the Z move on the on the Volcarona, and even if the Vol, well, the Volcarona, um, the Volcarona has to go for Roost, maybe predicting the Z move, but I don't even know if that, no, no, that would do too much still. But yeah, Cory still has the Z move on the Hard Dragon, which is huge with the rocks up. Now he can just click Z move on the Volk. Uh, if Karen, even if Karen Quiver dances, I think Z move still kills, right? I think it did 60-ish at plus one last time. I don't remember exactly though. But this game should bring Cory really high. Um, if he wins, he should have this by now, right? But with the Z move, like I don't know, I don't know how to explain every turn, but I feel like Cory played this correct. <laughs> so um, he still has the Z, so he's gonna hit it here. Wait, no, you don't have to hit the Hurricane. I think the Z move kills through Quiver dance. Maybe it lives on like three percent. Yeah, it does just kill, exactly. That's what I was thinking. So, Cory is 2077, which might just be enough to be in top 8. So, let's check the ladder rank. Uh, number 1, Semiotic Taze. Well, you hi, Cory. Cora, ABR, kid of this. Cory. Wait, let me pause this real quick here. I don't want this to be moving. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Cory is number 8 at the moment. So, now Ricardo and Ojama and Brokepa and Hallows, they all have to get a win to make it. Let me pause it. Okay, I want. I was. This just came to mind. I was gonna talk about this team that Ricardo has been using, and Ricardo found a game. If he wins this, he's in top eight again, I think. So his opponent is just using some wild team with Diggersby. Diggersby is a cool mon, but yeah, this team pretty much. Um, I followed Ricardo around a little bit. It's Z Dark Inium Bishop, which can pressure um, a lot of teams. Like it can bop those Clefable Balance teams. Then it's um, Scarf Landris. Like Ricardo loves this mon. He uses it a lot. Then it's um, three attacks Megalari, I think, with HP Fire, Serve, Ice Beam, R Roost. Toxic Spikes, Toxic Plex, Pex, plus Setup Reuniclus. His opponent has Protect on Heatron. He can scout that the Lando locks into U turn, so Ricardo is forced out. Oh, well, he could have clicked U turn again, but I guess he just hard switched. Lari um, has Serve. Since he has Protect, I assume his opponent is going to have Toxic on this Heatron, pot potentially. And yeah, he might gonna go for Toxic here, especially if he's a bulky Spadev Heatran, because he can um, Toxic into Protect and put the Ladi on a timer. Curum Black is a huge threat to the um, Ricardo's team, so I don't know if he can win this match. But yeah, the Reunicus is the double dance set that I talked about earlier, plus Toxic Spikes, Toxic Packs. Then he um, he has a Hazard stacking team, Toxic Spikes on Packs, Spikes and Rocks on the Ferrothorn, and if the opponent Defox. He can potentially go Bishop and punish a Defog, which is really cool, but Defiant to get the plus two attack. Scarf Lander for speed control, Bishop with Sucker Punch. Um, 
Yeah, du double dance reunion with Psychic. You run Psychic usually in over Psyshock because it beats Mega Scissor, um, Curse Mega Scissor with Acid, Acid Armor 1, 1v1. And it also beats Cur uh, not Curse, Coil Zygarde. But yeah, if this cure is Z-move, um, I don't think you should go hard for the Z-move because Toxapex is really obvious. Goes for Home Claws. Okay, buddy. So it's home I don't think it's Z-move then if it's Home Claws. It could be like um, a plate, uh, maybe, or it could be life, or I don't know what it is. But he goes hard lander then, scouting for fusion, expecting fusion bolt, and his opponent predicts that and goes for ice beam. And yeah, this game is looking bad for Ricardo. Home claws Kyurem is a good, well, I don't know if Home claws is good because Kyurem kind of already like it's hard to fit all the moves. Like you need fusion bolt, you sometimes want HP fire for scissor, sometimes you want off power as well. You want, um, yeah, Ice Beam Fusion Bolt, and you want Roost for longevity. If you're running Z, you want Freeze Shock as well, so it's like hard to fit everything. So I don't know how good Honkloss is. But yeah, um, he had to Iron Head there because, what's it called? Kyurem was too big of a threat to not Iron Head. The opponent knew that and just went into Heatran. Raw Heatran, so this can actually phase out the Reuniclus. Um, so this is like a really bad matchup for Ricardo. Um, like the only mon that can't get fa like the only way Reuniclus doesn't get phased out if, is if it's last mon Reuniclus, but he would also need T spikes up. Otherwise, Greninja still beats the um, Reuniclus. So opponent lays up some hazards now. I assume Ricardo is gonna go for Toxic spikes because it hits the Finny, the Greninja, and the Kyurem and the Diggersby, and he's that's like his only hope to get them up and somehow win Reuniclus. I personally don't see it happening. And if I find another game, I'm gonna click on another game. Um, but yeah, uh, so if Ricardo loses this, it's looking bad. If he wins it, he's back in top 8, I think, right? I don't remember exactly how the ladder was looking, but I think that's how it was. <clears throat> Imagine, like, some months, if they had, like, 5 or 6 move slot, they would, slots, they would become so much more dangerous. Like, wall breakers, if they get an extra move slot, so there's the z and it just bops Ferrothorn, because Ferrothorn runs but death these days, so there was no way I knew that would, obviously, not. that wasn't gonna live. So Bishop, this Kyurem doesn't have off power from the way this has been played. Um, I guess if he wants to predict switch, he can potentially um, go for a dark move or SD, but like, this is not looking too hard for Ricardo. Yeah, Kyurem is faster, Fusion Ball does a lot, he knocks off. Uh, even the crit doesn't do much, because that's probably a bulky Kyurem and it's Z-move. I'm pretty sure this has some sort of bulk investment because this is Adam and Bishop like that took it quite well But yeah, that's why I love that Cory has been using that high dragon because it's a dark type with levitate It cannot get hit by toxic spikes and can beat Reuniclus that way. That's really cool And also has like coverage for most of its checks like um, flash cannon for fairies and <clears throat> Off power for um, Like Megiana also hits Heatran, obviously, that you can check with um, High Dragon. So Sucker is there getting rid of the Kyurem. I mean, the opponent didn't need the Kyurem to win, I guess. It already bought the Feral Thorn, so now the Greninja. Yeah, the Greninja is a huge problem, especially with Hazards up. So if the... I mean, I guess the opponent kind of has the defog because he doesn't want the Greninja to get toxic. But okay, he does get it toxic. So um, Ricardo's gonna go Pex here because he doesn't want to give the Greninja Ash. That's really obvious. Okay, it's it's not Ash Ninja, it's just Scarf Ninja. I didn't pay attention. I don't know if he re revealed his set already. Scarf Ninja makes sense as well, because that guy's team is slow otherwise. Um, well, I guess his, he could have also been T-Wave on Crest, but that doesn't make much sense because he has Misty Terrain on Finny. So yeah, T-Wave doesn't make much sense. If he's not Scarf Gwen, I guess he would have had to be Scarf Diggersby, which is weird. So it makes sense to be Scarf Gwen on that team. Because uh, Mega Alakazam is a huge threat to this guy's team, so you want something to outspeak Alakaz outspeed Alakazam. So Ricardo just sex the Bishop. Yeah, I don't think Ricardo can win this. I think this Diggers B is banded. Um, since we don't see an item. It could be Sash. It could be Sash as well. But we know the Z-move is on Cure and we know this is not Life Orb. So I'm expecting either Sash or Band. Something along those lines. So Ladi is going to click uh, Ice Beam or Surf here. Opponent shouldn't stay in. And yeah, it's not looking good for Ricardo. Um, yeah, he could go into Cresselia, I guess. 
Like Diggersby, um, can get another kill later on when it comes in on packs. Or if it comes in on Reuniclus that hasn't set up asset armor yet. But let me pause, they're taking forever. Okay, so he switches out into Greninja, predicting the Surf or Ice Beam, and now he's just gonna click U turn. Ricardo, Ricardo can either click um, Roost or he can switch out into Toxapex as he decides to switch into packs. You turn really obvious coming out. Now Diggersby can come out and um, if it's banned return, I think it just gets a kill. Yeah, Diggersby comes out and I think return just picks one up. You don't want to click off quick in case Ricardo goes into Ladi. That's why I think return is the play. Okay, he clicks off quick. Um, because Pex is spit death, so I thought that uh, return would kill it anyway. Jaladi, um, he either has to sack Diggersby or he can go into Cress or Finny. Was in the crest? Yeah. I mean, there was no point in stacking it, but you never know it's the latter, right? So crest is probably Luna Dance. T-Wave. It is T-Wave. Wow. I just... I, I swear I don't remember this game and I did not look it up that he had T-Wave. I, I thought it wouldn't be T-Wave because of Mr. Terrain and Finny, but I talked about it earlier. But I swear I didn't know. <laughs> what the fuck? So now, since the Reunix is T-Wave, that's even harder to set up and... Pretty much game over for Ricardo, which means um, and I don't think he's gonna be able to qual. Well, we still have some time left. I think the deadline is in like 40, 45 minutes, 50 minutes. <clears throat> but yeah, this can either. Um, I don't. I don't think he has. I don't know if he has to do Dance right now. Okay, so ABR is also playing. I think ABR was he in, wasn't he in top eight at the moment? I don't know. I'm gonna refresh to see. Let me pause this so I can look it up and 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 not miss anything. Semiotic taste. Ojama won, so Ojama is now number three and pretty much guaranteed in. Well, you high Korra ABR. Yeah, ABR is still top eight and he got a game. Wow, I'm surprised. I guess he doesn't want to risk anything, so. Kidoff, this is number 8. And Cory is not top 8 anymore, so Cory has to get another game, right? Yeah, Cory is number 9, so Cory has to win a game or hope that ABR or Cora or, or Kid of Death or someone ahead loses a game. I don't think... Well, yeah, I think ABR is the only one who got a game above Cory. So Cory is probably going to grab a game himself. Because I don't think he wants to hope that um, the people above him lose games. Okay, so Reunix is setting up... Um, but if he doesn't set up Acid Armor, well, this is completely fine because he can just go Heatran and draw it out. Yeah, I was gonna say it's it's not a big threat for him because it's not Last Man Reuniclus yet, so he can still just draw it out. And when it's Last Man Reuniclus, he obviously has to just be careful that he doesn't let it set up. But now he can just draw it out. And now he can go back. I yeah, can just protect here, or he can go back in the crest. He just does just protect to get some leftovers. As Ricardo predicts that, just wants his Ladi at full. That way he can probably take a hit from the Diggers B. <clears throat> well, I think Dickensby was in serve range anyway. But yeah, Crest comes out. Um, Ricardo's mostly gonna switch here. He doesn't wanna get T-waved on Ladi, I assume. Mm, maybe. I guess he can... Yeah, I don't think he can win this game no matter what. So, double into Hedron. Is, is this Taunt? I don't think it's Taunt. It's Protect Raw, Rocks, and I guess Fire Move or what? It's not Earth Power, I think. Really odd set. Yeah, it's Lava Plume. <clears throat> well, yeah, looking at this ABR... Game, this is another team, but um, Toxic Spikes, Pax plus Reuniclus, two steals in the back, um, Mega Tita with Rocks, and then Scarf Landris. I have actually stolen this team myself. Um, it's weak to Mega Mowal, so Mega Mowal is quite common on the ladder, so I wouldn't use the team like this, but like ABI, and like he's really like smart. He like analyzes the ladder and like he, he changes teams and usually knows what to use and what range on the ladder, right? <clears throat> but yeah, let's watch this game because the Ricardo game is not looking good. F um, like it's, they're taking forever there, and it's looking like Ricardo loses that anyway. My voice is pretty dead. <clears throat> I hope you guys are fine if I don't talk about like every detail. I mean, yeah, I'm just kind of out of it because I haven't been recording at all, and I also haven't been playing Mons much. So I feel like I need a few videos to get back on track and have some have the goat narrations back. But this should still be okay. So this bishop is actually gonna give AB a huge trouble. Um, picks up the T there, obviously outspeeds it, no reason to sucker punch. Um, 
So what is he gonna do? Celestila and protect? He can go to something like Lando and then switch out on Sucker Punch, but it doesn't really game him much, especially if the opponent predicts that. But yeah, um, this game we're just gonna skip through real quick to see who wins. But I think um, the CE guy has this game. It's a really bad matchup for Ricardo. That's how I see it. Oh yeah, Ricardo. Um, I think LL was talking about it earlier. Ricardo was going was out. Like he got was like number six or seven, and then he went out like partying or something. And now he just got back, and deadline is in a few uh, minutes. But um, I don't know. Maybe I might try to pivot here, predicting a sucker punch to get extra leech seed chip on the Bisharp. I don't know how high this Ash guy is, but he's actually quite high. So let's see. He can still potentially qualify. 1981. Okay, so he's he's actually quite far off. Never mind. I thought he was a bit higher. But yeah, he reads ABR's obvious switch there because ABR predicted the sucker punch, and he goes for knockoff. And he only has to take Iron Barbs, so he doesn't have to take Leech Seed. ABR makes the same play again. Does he sucker this time? Yep, he does sucker this time. So now ABR can protect, weaken the Bishop more with Leech Seed. Um, but the Bishop still gets more kills, so I don't think ABR can win this. And ABR is probably going to be out of top 8 if he loses this. I mean, yeah, let's see how it plays out, but I think Ash is in a good position. So he's just going to knock off here. ABR has to, I guess, hope to get a double protect. Or, like, he either has, yeah, he has to hope for double protect or sack something, like, pretty much. Knockoff is gonna kill something, so he does sacks the packs. Okay, I guess he's gonna go for double protect afterwards, after he sacks packs. Now he can go back, Celestia, and then protect. And then, okay, he goes land. Okay, what? Okay, yeah, he's playing the sucker punch with his knockoff war now. So, um, I think it's really obvious that ABA is gonna. S wow. Damn, that guy read him. Okay, so ABA tried to, um,. Oh, SD again. <laughs> and now um, ABI has to go for the double protect here. Does he get it? What's it called? I forgot what I was trying to say. Basically, ABI um, changed up his play earlier. He switched out the land, or this time he stayed in, and the guy read him correct and went for sucker. I thought, it, yeah. I would have gotten that play wrong. I'm bad. <laughs> but yeah, looking at the top eight. Yeah, we can see ABR um, was still in the top eight, but if he loses this, he's not anymore. Um, so it doesn't go for double protect there. Okay, yeah. I mean, this game is pretty much over because he sacked, had to sack so many months to this. So protect is coming out <coughs> here from the Celestealer. And, I mean, the Coco and the uh, Gyarados in the back. If it's Taunt Gyarados, it just wins probably. Lichi doesn't even kill. Does get, does get double protect, though. But now if it's Taunt, Bish, uh, taunt Gyarados with DD that just wins. Um, Coco can also be Taunt Screen. I assume this might be Screens Coco because it's HR, right? Yeah, it's Taunt. Most likely Screens. Maybe our nose Taunt's coming out in Heavy Slams. Um, so he does have T-Bolt on Taunt. Is it T-Bolt on Screens Coco? That's really odd. Like, I don't know if it's Screens, but it looks like it would be Screens because this is Offense, but Setup Sweepers. But yeah, Gyarados can just kill the Celestilla here with Waterfall, okay. And ABR is not top 8 anymore, right? So he drops to 2053. Let me update the ladder real quick. Number 1, Semiotic, Taste, Kingpin. Number 3, Value, High 5. Korra 6, Kid of Desert. Curry is back at number 8. Um, Ricardo probably um, lost that other game. Brokepper, also not in anymore. ABR down at 253, so ABR definitely has to keep getting games. Hopefully, um, maybe I won't hide the games. Oh, is the Ricardo game still going on? No, I don't think so. I think it's over, right? Just gonna skip through real quick. It's still going on, okay. So, Ricardo, um... Yeah, okay, that's the, another ABR game. So, Ricardo got another game versus ABR. ABR already got his rocks up. So, roll him in on Ferrothorn. Um, Ricardo can get up hazards here as he dodges a Wisp. I'm annoying for him. This is a double hazard Ferrothorn, so he's gonna lay up the spikes. I already talked about Ricardo's team. Um, and yeah, I snatched this as well. But I don't know if I'm allowed to pass this around, so I'm probably not gonna do that. Um, I guess you guys can ask me for pace if you want it. Oh no, I'm just gonna let you guys vote on it, whatever team. Well, after the next PS Live. But yeah, um, I assume Avia is gonna pivot out here to get some regen with his Tornadus. Because rocks only do um, like 25 to Torn. And region heals 33 point something, like one third. 
Um, I don't think the Rotom's Defog is actually Pain Split because Pain Split helps with the Storm matchup. Blunder already made um, an, an analysis video for this team, so you guys pretty much know AVI's team, right? I don't have to talk about it. <clears throat> but yeah, good play into Tangrus there to block a Leech Seed. I know it missed, but it would have blocked the Leech Seed and goes back into Tornadoes. And um, he can potentially get up a Defog or he can pivot. Does the side of Defog. I assume he's just going to die here to his serve. Yep, he has serve Ice Beam. So Greninja, this is the Ash Greninja, so Ricardo is forced into Pax. I don't remember how healthy he has Ferrothorn is, but Pax can get up... Um, can I go for Scald? Gets up T-Spike. I wasn't sure if he would get up T-Spikes. But yeah, he needs the T-Spikes so that the Greninja gets affected. Right, right, right. He needs the Greninja to be affected. He doesn't get the burn there and he just gets bobbed by T-Punch. Yeah, Blana talked about this in his video, as the T-Punch was not really common. Um, up until ABR made this team, I think. This mobile is not max attack, it has some bulk investment. I'm not sure what the bulk is for exactly, but I know that it helps ta you take um, a plus one high jump kick from Halucha with the Intimidate. I think Rotom can also Rotom can also take a high jump kick if it's kept healthy, a plus two one high jump kick. So um, Ricardo is gonna lay up a hazard here, but he's not gonna be able to get up all the layers anymore because um, like, Abia did sack his Torn to defog all the hazards away, and now if he pressures the Feral Thorn, um, it won't be able to get many hazards. Okay, so it just leeches. Um, Abia can go for rocks here, or he can click... Okay, he doubles into Grand. <laughs> doubles into Grand, predicting the Lari, good play as well. He could have also gone for rocks, but this works. And Ryuna lives on one, but yeah, Pex is dead. And Greninja is looking like it just destroys Ricardo. <clears throat> Oh yeah, Pex died to the SD Mega Mawa. Mega Mawa is amazing with these balanced type teams. Um, there's not much that you can switch into Mawa reliably. Like, I'm sometimes I use Fat Mew that can switch into Mawa, but the problem with Fat Mew is you don't outspeed stuff, and like my you be always hates on me when I use Fat Mew, and I have to agree it's not that great overall, but it's one of the few months that can switch into Mega Mawa, which is really cool in my opinion. Um, but yeah, the problem with if you're not fast on Mew is you cannot, and if you run off power, like you cannot hit, you have to be faster than Heatran. So you lose a lot of bulk. And sometimes, I think UB even runs speed for like base 95s, like Lele and Kyurem on his Mew. Is Kyurem my base 95? I don't remember. But Rotom can just click Pain Split here. This Ladi is Surf, Ice Beam, HP Fire, Roost, so it can't touch the Rotom. Or does he just Volt Switch? Does just Volt Switch to get momentum. And now, <clears throat> Heatran can just click Z-Move here, I guess. If he doesn't want to risk missing a Magma Storm, he could also pull a double back, but he does just Magma Storm, okay. So Ricardo is going to heal here, go for a Roost. Maybe I go through him knowing that the Ladi can't touch it. And he can either go for Pain Split or Volt Switch. Ricardo going for the Freeze here, hoping for something. Uh, Abia goes for Pump in case Ricardo wants to pivot into Landris there, I think. Also, um, he doesn't lose anything from Hydro Pumping. If his Rotom gets low, he can just Pain Split up. Because mm, Lari goes for Roost, so now... Yeah, he does Pain Split and he gets a lot of health back. This is one of the few games that I remember somewhat more in detail, because I watched Blunder's video the other day, where he showcased his replay. <coughs> But yeah, um, HP Fire is not able to kill the Mega Mobile. Mo Mega Mobile has okay bulk after it Megas. Before it Megas, the bulk is absolute trash, but after it Megas, it's okay. Goes into Rotom knowing that, can, knowing that he can take every hit from Landris, and even if it u turns, that's completely fine. Now, um, I don't know if Volt Switch kills, but if Volt Switch kills, he's gonna click that, otherwise, he might have. Nah, Volt Switch is always the play, I think. He does pump, okay. I thought you would Volt Switch because even if the Renix lives the Volt Switch, it would have to recover and then. Um, Heatwing could come out and collect the kill, or Marwell could come out. But I don't know, like... Um, oh, Greninja is super low, yeah. Like, I don't know if the Heatwing already used the Z-move. If the Heatwing doesn't have the Z-move anymore, then... I think he used it earlier. Then it was the correct play to um, to pump and not risk missing Madness Storm. And I guess he also doesn't want to risk go Marwell and risk missing Play Rough. But yeah, um... ABI wins that game and Ricardo lost that game versus ABI and he also lost this game. So Ricardo's pretty much um, in a bad spot now. He has to win multiple games. But yeah, let me pause my recording here to see. So number one is Simiatic, number two is Chase, number three is Ojama, number four, well, you high.
Karakido Death and Kori. So Abia is a number nine if I see this correct. So um Kori is back in top eight. Halos and Abia are both almost in top eight, but not in top eight. You can see how close this is. So let's see what other game we can find. I'm gonna pause it. Okay, we are not gonna pause it. So we have a Kori game here. Um I think I just looked at it and Kori was at top eight, right? Was he? I think he was. But it's looking like he just wins this game, and this is gonna bring him in the put Cory in an amazing position to qualify. Um, he can just click off paw here with the high dragon. He can obviously lift sucker punch and what the heck? the guy just sacks his bishop. He doesn't even go for sucker punch. Okay. And he just didn't want to win, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I don't think it made a difference. Honestly, Cory had that game wrapped up. So it's mega Gyarados. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Does he just go for Dark Sea? I assume Cory just goes for Dark Sea unless he has used it already. This is only nine turns in, and that guy's team is like already dead. <laughs> so unless this has Ice Fang, Hydreigon can just spam off power here and beat it when we won, I think. And if it doesn't beat it when we won, it probably brings it in range from Tornado's Rocky Helmet or in range from Fake Out from Medicham. It does have Ice Fang. So, um, yeah, I think it makes sense because it hits Tapu Bulu, which is used a lot to check Gera Mega Gera. But yeah, Medicham can just click Fake Out. If that doesn't kill, he still has Rocky Helmet on the Torn. And last one, Excrete will obviously cannot win the game because there is a Slowbro and a Celesteela on Cory's side. So Cory's gonna um, win this and he's look looking really great. <clears throat> Let's just go to Torn and he obviously has to go for a contact move to kill this. Earthquake can't kill it because it's a flying type. And I don't know if Earthquake would even kill because it it's not stabbed. But yeah, Waterfall is gonna kill Gyarados with the Helmet. And now Celestia can come out and click Flamethrower, or Slowbro can come out and click Scald for Curry and wrap up this game. Good god, Curry is super fire. Like, I didn't go into detail about the anal analysis on these games, but like, his run is insane. Like, did you see his GXE 90 plus? He wins and he's at 2092 and that puts him super high on ladder. Let me refresh the ladder. So we have um, Simiatic, and then we have Cory. So two French goons, number one and number two. Then we have Taze, my man, and Ojama at four. Ampo still not up there with his cycle one ult. He already qualified. Well, you high and Cora, I think. And Kid of Death is number eight at the moment. Thankfully, he's still in there. Okay, found another game, Ricardo Hallows. But I think this game is... Okay, I don't know. You guys could see the timestamp there, that doesn't matter. Yeah, you guys know that I'm narrating over the old file. I remember this game was relatively long, I think. Yeah, Halos is like the one who can still qualify, I think. Ricardo has to win multiple games to get in. Well, I assume both of them are in multiple games. So let's check Ricardo's rank. He is at 2032. Yeah, so Ricardo has to win at least two or three games. Um, like two versus like high opponents. But he probably has to win three. And the deadline is in like 20-ish minutes. So I don't think he has enough time. And Halos is at 2076 and he only has to win one game. So Halos still has a fair shot. Has a decent chance to make it still. I mean, I don't remember Halos' team. But I assume it's either Scarf Lando or Scarf Greninja. Since he just U-turns with Lando, I'm going to assume it's Scarf Landers. Um, yeah, Zapdos could come in on packs because this is Toxic Spikes and not Toxic, so Zapdos um, would not get Toxic, that's what I'm trying to say. Is he Pressure? He is Pressure. I like Pressure. Um, on some teams, uh, obviously Static makes sense on Zapdos. If, you're, if your team is slow or if you have slow breakers that want the support from Static to paralyze opposing mons and then you can break through them better. Like if you have a Mega Heracross, a Mega Mawile, something along those lines. Or even the Mega Medicham, they can appreciate Static on Zapdos. And the Static in general, um, yeah, I, I usually double my Landris out when I see Zapdos on the other side before I know if they're Static or if they're Pressure. But yeah, um, bulky Mega Tita um, usually wants some HP, some speed, and then a lot of attack. It's like Pursued Rocks, um, what's it called? Yeah, sometimes you see Fire Punch, sometimes you see Ice Punch on Tita, and then usually you see Stone Edge in the last move slot. Kid of Death also in a game, okay. So if Kid of Death wins this, he's pretty much in a great spot to qualify. 
I don't know if he is um, still in top 8, but um, if he's not number 8, he's number 9. So we're definitely gonna focus on the Kid of Death match. Let me not watch this game. Okay, so turn one, he crits, <laughs> he crits the Z Outrage on the Swampert and gets rid of the Swampert. Uh, I know all the sets from Korra's team because Pokeam used this team today in a video. Um, Spec Kingdra, Z Move, Kartana, Taunt, Knock Off, Hurricane, um, Defog, Tornadoes, Assault with Megiena, Rocks, Swampert, and then Scald Roost, Hurricane. And I forgot the last move on the Pelipper. It's not Defog, because Defog is on a Torn, if I recall correctly. But yeah, um, Ferrozone is a great range check. This is a team that Sorry made that Kid of Death has been using. He has been using this through the entire cycle. Um, this Katana has SD, Knock Off, Sacred Sword and Leaf Blade with Grass UMZ, if I'm not mistaken. But the Zapdos should be able to um, live a plus to Grassium because it's not there's no grassy terrain up. Because I have had my Zapdos get Oakwood from Grassium before in terrain, but there's no terrain. So he should have Heat Wave and kill this. He volts, which is okay. That's also a fine play because he can just, um, yeah, volt, get a slow volt switch into a Mon like Ninja that outspeeds Katana and can threaten it out. Hydro Pump is four times resisted, but Specs Ash Ninja, even though it's not in Battle Bond form, yet still does a lot to that. Kingdra in rain, obviously. So Zapdos gets sacked here. Correct play, not going hard into the Ferrothorn because that would be too low then. And now Ferrothorn. Um, Katana is really obvious, or Tornado is one of the two. So does he double out? He just goes for T Wave and misses. That sucks. Um, but yeah, pretty much if Kid of Death wins this, he's, he should be in because the deadline isn't like 18 minutes. And he should be in a really good spot then to qualify. Um, and the higher pump is there sucks on AV Magirna, but I, I did not collect the Dragonium turn 1 on the Swampert, but I can imagine that it potentially mattered as well, because Mega Swampert is pretty bulky. And the Garchomp is Jolly, not Element, obviously, because you need sp um, yeah you, ne you want the Jolly speed here on Chomp. But yeah, I can talk about the team a little bit. It's um, SD Mega Mole with, I think, knockoff player of Sucker Punch. Just standard Ash Ninja. I think it's Ice Beam though. Ice Beam is really cool because it can hit Tabu Bulu on the switch. A lot of people use Bulu to check Ash Ninja. So Ice Beam on that and I think it's then... Um, ooh! Crits the Pelipper with Stone Edge. I'm pretty sure that I would not have killed without the crit. Scarf Lando able to pick up the Pelipper. Um, yeah, Edge is really cool on Scarf Lando to um, hit Tornadoes, Zapdos and Pelipper. Especially Pelipper because the rain is so common on the ladder. Um, I mean this cycle is a little... This cycle it's a little bit less common. Just because of the team that ABM made that has been spammed with Tangros and Rotom and also my man UB made a team that Taze used um, <clears throat> that also has like great rain, a really good rain matchup. Like rain can, it's, it's not an auto win, it's not an auto win, you still have to think and play, but it's a good matchup is what I'm trying to say for that team. But yeah, goes in the land together, get the Intimidate off and he can... Um, just click U-turn here, I think. Yeah. So Helmeton chips down the Landris. But yeah, it's um, pretty much SD Mega Mawal, then Ice Beam Greninja. I think it's um, T-Wave Power. Is it Spikes Pharaoh or is it Rocks? No, no, it's Rocks Garchom and Spikes Ferrothon, and then not Spikes on Gren, but Ice Beam on Gren. Right, so he misses another pump there. He missed one on the Megina already. Mm, that's a bit annoying for him. You can sack something here, I think the... Oh, the rain ended, the rain ended right, so Greninja outspeeds and he was forced out into AV Megiana. And... I don't think he wants to Volt Switch into one of the ground types. So what does he click here? Does he have a double that covers Garchomp and... Everything? He Flash Candy, yeah, because he didn't want the Garchomp with the Lando in for free. And the play worked out for Kill of Death. So Ferrothorn with Focus, Megina with AV Megina with Focus Blast, yeah, makes sense on Rain because you want to weaken the Ferrothorn for the Rain Threepers. Ferrothorn is like super common these days. Spikes are just super great. Um, you see Jarable also because Jarable can hit Tornadoes harder than um, yeah. If you don't have Jarable, Tornadoes defox on Ferrothorn for free. So that's why you see Jarable on Ferrothorn sometimes, and it also helps. Um, to Oko Tapu Lele Jarbal on Ferrothorn. 
edges catching Torn on the switch, good play. Knowing that he wouldn't sack the Kartana there. Wait, I don't remember how healthy the Kartana was, but he pretty much knew that he would switch out. Mm -mm -mm. Looking like Kid of Death is gonna win this. So, yeah, Katana was super low, so I would have died to like Earthquake. That's why he switched out into the Torn. But yeah, Boki, um, Helmet Torn is able to live a Stone Edge with max HP investment. That's usually uh, really cool in general, having max HP on Torn. Um, versus opposing Landers, you can just scout their set because even Scarf Stone Edge doesn't Oko. So it's a double down here between Card, Pharaoh. And yeah, pretty sure Kid of Death has this. Goes into Mega Mawile and. I think he just clicks player off here because he doesn't want to click knockoff into the Megiana. He knocks, okay, he knocks and he kills the Torn. Well, yeah, knockoff is 100% accurate, so I understand why he clicked it. Um, and thankfully, he did not get fully confused. Now he clicks player off on the Megiana because that's his best move to hit the Megiana. Flashcan doesn't kill and knockoff picks up the kill and kill of death should qualify now. He should be back in top 8 and the deadline isn't like... 12, 8, 10 minutes, something like that. So Empo is actually number... Um, he has multiple odds in the top on the ladder. I don't know if I'm allowed to reveal them, but it's obvious, I guess, because I said it. Oh, no, Scholars? I don't think Scholarships is Empo, right? But yeah, pretty much we have Simiatic, Kid of Death, Cory ABR, Taze. So like, um, 1, 2, 3, 4, four ABR, Ojama. Well, you and High are in at the moment. So Malekith and Hallows are right behind there. And this Z and F guy is at 2062. I have no idea who that is. What the fuck? Oh, also, yeah, like... I know Tay's Kid of Death and... I also hope Cory qualifies. I know I'm a little bit, like, not, not too much, right? But yeah, we have so many games here. One of them is High versus Bro Kappa. Uh, thankfully, in the last few minutes before the before the what's it called deadline the people usually don't hide their games anymore yeah i'm just refreshing this every few seconds i'm not gonna read it out but you guys can check yourself what the top eight are mm -mm. but yeah kid of death is pretty much guaranteed and now with the number two spot and cory and Thais are also looking good but unless this is ice fang here um this cannot kill the Bulu. Well, you is just gonna click a grass the grass move on each. Um, yeah, this is another team that the French people have been using that well you is using at the moment. I think it's Bandit Zygarde. Um, it's another T Spikes plus Reunitless team. This time T Spikes Greninja. Um, sometimes it's the um, extra sensory on this team to hit Toxapex and kill it with Greninja, and then you can set up the Toxic Spikes again because you obviously have to nuke. You have to lure in Toxapex. That way you can keep your T Spikes up. Um, but this team has a Reuniclus as well, so it doesn't necessarily have to be. It did have Ice Fang and it still didn't kill. Wow, Bulu is bulky. Yeah, I know the French. Yeah, the French Bulu spread runs like 76 defense investment, I think. That was a clutch eat. I mean, it might have lived without the investment as well, but the investment definitely helped a bit. Um, I like the investment a lot on Bulu in defense. It helps with the rain matchup with the Swampert. Yeah, I also steal, I stole this team, or oh, my man Worm stole this team that Value is using off replays. And we have, we pretty much have it exact. We just have, we might just have some EVs not correct, but we have it correct for the most part. And yeah, Malikus is using the team that Extra Shine made. Is this on sample teams? It has been spammed all over the ladder. Um, I had this team in my builder for a while. So it's Mega Gyarados, Shifki Megiana. Um, yeah, Protect on Bulu is also really fire. Let me talk about that a little bit. It helps with Choice Lock Mons. I've seen matchups where um, Bulu went for Protect on Bandit Katana because Bandit Katana rain is quite common. That's Charm Flash rain. So you Protect on the opponent going for Smart Strike and you have a Heat Rain in the back. So then it's a 50-50. The opponent can double back into Swampert. And if you predict that, you can go for Horn Leech. It happened in one game between um, Sidumas and I think JYT. Um, where you um, Horn Leech, where Sidumas Horn Leech predicting the double switch into Swampert and catching it with the Horn Leech um, because earlier when he protected then he went into Heatran but the second time he knew the mind games were real he knew that the opponent might predict the Heatran but yeah um, this is Shift Game again with I think is it 3 attacks or is it command? I don't remember gets a freeze um, but I'm pretty sure this Megina has Focus Blast um, then it's Sash lead Drill and Sash lead Greninja the Greninja is Spikes, Taunt, Ice Beam, HP, Fire if I'm not mistaken the Blacephalon is a common sub-CM, 
Uh, it's a Subsea Ember variant with Shadow Ball and Flame. Flame Tower Fire Blast. It's Ghost Dium pretty much. And it only has a little bit of special attack investment that way it gets the speed boost. Sidu must also use this team in World Cup. Um, there's two there's two ver um, different Zygarde variants, um, I think. Sometimes you see Pain Split on the Zygarde, sometimes you see E Speed. He T Bolts, but I'm pretty sure he also has Focus Blast on this. Yeah, I think this is a 3 attacks Megina. And I think this is a modest Megina, if I recall correctly, at least on the version that I have from this team. With a good amount of bulk investment. Mm -mm 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 -mm. But yeah, I only played like two songs so far, um, the entire 80 minutes of this video. But I like this um, I like this music too much to not use it. But yeah, Focus Blast, pummel, Z Pummeling, <laughs> Bob's Dehedron. But yeah, did I finish talking about the French team? It's pretty much um, Rock Strand. Double setup, as it armor command reuniclus with toxic spikes, Greninja, Bandit, Zygarde. Um, sometimes they use rest sleep talk Zygarde, the French people would band. That way you can throw Zygarde into like Scalds or like if it gets status you can get rid of it. But yeah, Melikus just wins with me Broken Megina. Uh, Broken Megina does it again. Um, some games this month just wins. Also yeah, the last two months are like the bulky protect Horn Leech as the superpower Bulu with leftovers and mixed defensive, mainly Spadef. And last one is Rocky Helmet Tornadoes on that French team. Um, but yeah, let's look at the ladder right now. Number one, Semiotic Kiss. Oh, Kiss just got up to number two with that win, so he's looking really good to qualify. Kid of Death, Cory, Taze, ABR, Ojama, and Hai are qualifying at the moment. Um, deadline is really soon. Let me see if I can find another game or if that's it for the day. Ricardo Hellos are still playing. Um, I guess if Hellos wins this, he might get into top eight. But yeah, this was a big win for Kiss. And Hai Bro Cap are also still playing. Uh, I remember those are like the last games that I was recording. Um, this is the UB stall that I was talking about earlier that the pilot is using. With Motris and Avalok. <laughs> it looks really weird, but I don't think that team is bad actually. But yeah, Broke Up as 2032. I think he tilted. He was like close to qualifying. You can see he's in multiple games. I clicked on two of his games. He was, um, yeah, he's using Comet Suicune. I don't think Suicune is that great in Sun and Moon. I don't know. I mean, it can be super nasty sometimes, but that pressure com um, pressure PP stall. But there's like a good amount of mons that can deal with Suicune and Sun and Moon. Uh, Pex. Gastron is not that common anymore, so I guess that's one mon less. But yeah, Tapu Bulu is, if it's sub Protect Kuhn, then you can actually stall Tapu Bulu out. So in that matchup, it can actually be good with like Bulu if it stalls there of Horn Leeches. <laughs> Yeah, um, I assume this is gonna be default Megalady on this team. I mean, uh, Volcarona is really busted, but it just needs that much. So it needs so much support. Like I would always use Volcarona with double defog if I would be using it. It's Calm Mind, wow. So I don't think it's defog if it's Calm Mind. But yeah, Halos is spamming games. These are multiple games. Um, I remember I clicked. This is the Charm Flash Rain that I talked about earlier. With it's Ghostium as the Mimikyu. AV Megiana, Bennett, Kartana, Spex, Kingdra, Rocks, Three Attacks, Mega Swampert, and then just U turn Pelipper to get the Rain Streepers in with Damp Rock for 8 turns of rain. Uh, yeah, this stall game is not that interesting. Like, that's the problem I have. It's super fun to spectate the last few games, right? Before deadline. The problem I have there is just way too many games to focus on one game. And then I just clicked between games, I could not decide. Da -da 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 -da, and I think now I focused on this one. Like, I only recorded the screen for this game at this point. Because I didn't want to change between games anymore. But there were, like, multiple people that still had a shot to qualify. And some of the games were hidden. I remember some, um, yeah, like, all the Ojama games were hidden. But some other game from someone who almost qualified was also hidden. That's just a bit annoying because you can't watch all the games. But, uh, yeah, like I said earlier, at least some of the games, or most of the games, I mean, um, at, like, the last few hours during the last few hours, I mean. People usually don't hide the games anymore, thankfully, in the last few hours. Like, one of the two players usually unhides, uh, unmod joins, and then someone links it in the old room. But yeah, the deadline for this Cycle 3, let me talk about that real quick, is Saturday. I think the cycle was one day longer for some reason than the other cycles. And this, the deadline is 9 a.m. Uh, East, Eastern time, I think, this time. Oh, Stone Edge to pick up the Volk. If High wins this game, I think he's pretty much guaranteed in. So yeah, he just won, right? 
I'm pretty sure, right? That's a cool tech on Bulu to not let Vocal Runa set up. Um, the team that High is using, it's like bulky offense with Mega Mobile, looks pretty similar to a team that Sidomas used during World Cup. But yeah, let me pause the screen. High is pretty much guaranteed, and now Simiatic, Malikus, High, Kid of Death, Cory, Taze, ABR. And number 8 is Ojama. Um, so let me see if any other game is happening. Let me pause real quick. Yeah, Halos is at 2076, so we're just gonna watch him. Because he's quite close, he has to win only one game, I think. I didn't, like, look at the points exactly, if he has to win one or two, but I think he only has to win one to make it. So, um, but I'm really happy that Taith, Cory, and Kid of Death are most likely gonna qualify. Um, yeah, at the end of the video, I remember not ending this recording for like 20 minutes because it took like 20 minutes to post the screen on the forums of the eight people that qualify so i'm just going to show you that screen at the end and yeah i was talking about cycle 3 my man ultra balls unfortunately wasn't able to qualify as you guys can see here hellos is in so many games yeah you're just you're just trying like when it's only a few minutes left you get as many games as possible just hope that you um yeah now he's using offense that's what he should be doing for faster games that's what you should be doing in the last few minutes. Okay, so well you I'm gonna talk about this team. Or oh, well I owe you, I don't know how to pronounce him. He's using uh Ampo offense, right? So it's Life of SD Cartana, Zemov Gyarados. I think this is actually soft scent. I think um Robopoke came up with this. Robopoke also qualified in cycle one. Um it's Scarfictini with like final gambit, U-turn, recreate, and trick. It's super wild. It's like max HP Scarfictini. It's a really wild set, and then it's um, I think Trick Room with Sugarberry Megina, and Soft Sand Dragon Tail Zygarde, and allows you to beat Curse Scissor and Asset Armor Reuniclus by setting up a Dragon Dance, Dragon Tailing them out, and then you have a boost ahead of whatever mon they have out the opponent. Pretty pretty cool. Um, Lopani is a decent mon on the ladder at the moment because it's good versus all these offenses, and this drill is I think Sash lead with like Rocks Earthquake, Spin, and I think it's actually Rock Tomb in the last slot. I'm not sure what that's for exactly, I assume it's just to prevent opposing setup sweepers like Gyarados from setting up on you early on, but I'm not sure exactly what it's for. If someone who made this team or used this team knows what Rock Tomb on Drill is for specifically, please let me know in the comments. But yeah, um, this is Zemo of Gyarados, it's actually not Mega, this team doesn't have a Mega, unless he changed it. The version that I have been seeing is not Mega, it's um, Taunt, Dragon Dance, or oh, Dragon Tail to phase it out, really cool. So I assume this is Tank Trump. I haven't been paying attention, but I just saw... Oh yeah, it is... We just saw the Katana is chipped by the Rocky Helmet. But I actually don't pay attention to the turns. I just talk about random stuff because I don't want to talk about every turn. So Zemo of Torn, really cool, but it probably doesn't kill because we all know how bulky Zygarde is. So Dragon Dance and now Southern Arrows should be able to bop him. Um, this is... Dragon Dance, Southern Arrows, Dragon Tail. What is the last move? Is it E-Speed? Because if it's E speed, he can um, out prioritize Aqua Jet. Well, he might be in Fake Out range. I'm not sure. Now, Fake Out, Fake Out might not kill. Fake Out might not kill. I don't think Fake Out kills. I think Fake Out does like 15 maybe. But yeah, pretty much Hellos uh, has to win to have a shot to make it. But the deadline is in two minutes or one minute. So I don't know if he can finish this game. Like, kind of a big thing doing the last minutes is also timer stalling. So, let's see if he has E-Speed on Zygarde. Also, I don't know if that would kill the Crawdon. I assume it doesn't kill? Yeah, it doesn't kill. Okay, I was like gonna say for a second. Crawdon is not that frail. It's frail, but it's not that frail, right? But here, um, Trick Room Magina. He, ha he didn't have Life Orb. So, I assume that's um, Choice Bandit Crawdon, since the Z-Move was already on the Tornadus. But yeah, I was talking about people that I want to qualify, right? My man Ultra Bolt unfortunately didn't qualify in any of the first two cycles, but he's going for it in cycle three and he's high 1900s at the moment. I really hope he quals. He definitely has the potential and he's a great player. So who else? Lopani kicks us up there in cycle three at the moment, trying to qualify. Um, this game is not looking too good for... Like, I think this Megina is like really threatening to Hell, that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, bookie Trick Room with Sugarberry. I mean, if it was Aya Papa, this would be even scarier in this scenario. But Sugar makes a lot of sense. Um, this type of team is also really weak to Ash Ninja. Like, you have some checks to it, but like, Ash Ninja can be a huge problem for this. Like, you have Gyarados to resist water, and you have Magina to resist Dark Pulse. 
But like, and you have like Scarf Victini with max HP, so I guess it can take Water Shuriken kind of. But like, it's a huge threat, right? So updating the ladder, I think that, oh yeah, basically I remember now. I stopped recording the match because it's deadline. So I'm hovering over all the names here and I'm saying this is the deadline. But then, and yeah, someone posted a screenshot here. But I still wasn't 100% sure if this was the official deadline. So I paused the um, recording for like 20 or 30 minutes till they posted the screenshot. And then I showed the result. But yeah, that house game didn't even finish. Because um, I remember now it was already deadline. Okay, what the fuck is going on? But yeah, I guess we can... Um, did I, did I record the entire game? I don't think I did. Because this this um, file that I have w I'm watching here is like one more minute. I think I'll just show you guys the deadline. Let me skip ahead. N not the deadline, the people that qualify. And well, I guess if I recorded this entire game, you can watch it to the end. I don't remember if I did, but at this point... I'm like 100% like sure that the deadline was already like one minute ago from this point away. Okay, so there's the screenshot. Unfortunately, I didn't record the end of that game. But yeah, we see here top 8 are at this point when the deadline was were semiotic. A French player, grads to him. I know he has been trying cycle 1 a lot and he did it cycle 2. Malakis, I think a Spanish player, right? Hi from. Uh, he played Northeast, he won World Cup. Kid of Death, Bob, know him a bit, props to him. Cory, know him a bit, Bob, French player, GOAT. Look at the GXE from Cory, 93. 94, what? No, not 93, my bad. <laughs> I mixed up the GXE with the, this. But yeah. Um, Taze qualified, really happy for him and ABR and Ojama qualified. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, like I said, I'm a bit out of narrating. I haven't narrated in a fat minute, so I don't think it was my best video. But if you enjoyed and if you want to see more, smash that like button. And I'll be bringing you a short on live in the next days or um, ulti spectating again, one of the two things. Hope you guys have a fantastic day, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. Bye.